Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Quotes Today by Live Law, your one-step destination for the latest and fastest legal updates. I'm your host Urvashi Chauhan, bringing you day-to-day happenings, landmark judgments, crucial rulings and expert insights into the world of law. Starting with the most talked about matter at the moment, the RG Car rape and murder case in Kolkata. A bench comprising Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandra Chood, Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra today heard the Suomoto case taken over the horrific incident. It questioned the West Bengal police over the shortcomings in its investigation in relation to the rape and murder of the trainee doctor on 9th August. The bench today perused the status report filed by CBI which took over the investigation under directions of the Calcutta High Court and also the records submitted by the West Bengal Police. After seeing the records, CGI D.Y. Chandra Chood posed several questions to senior advocate Kapil Sibyl who is representing the state of West Bengal, highlighting delay in registration of the FIR and inconsistencies in timings regarding entries for unnatural death. The court asked him to ensure presence of a responsible police officer on the next date of hearing so that the court could get responses. Solicitor General of India Tushar Mehta stated that what was recorded at 10.10 a.m. was the general diary entry and the unnatural death case was registered at 11.30 p.m. and the FIR registration took place thereafter. Taking note of certain apprehensions raised by the state regarding protests turning violent, the court clarified that the authorities would be at liberty to exercise lawful powers to regulate protests. However, peaceful protests should not be disturbed. The bench also appealed to the doctors to return to their duties and protected them from coercive actions for their absence due to protests till today. The court directed all states and union territories to prevent any apprehension of violence at medical establishments. The matter will be heard now on 5th September. In a related update, the Calcutta High Court also heard a plea today filed by former RG Car Deputy Superintendent Akhtar Ali accusing former college and hospital principal Dr. Sandeep Ghosh of mismanagement of dead bodies, misutilization of funds and selling biomedical waste on the open market, etc. The High Court questioned the state government on why a special investigation team probe to Ghosh was initiated only after the rape-murder incident of the resident doctor when there were various complaints against Ghosh which had been filed before state authorities. The petitioner Ali contended that Ghosh was a very powerful man with connections in the state administration and would use his connections to avoid any consequences for his actions. The state's counsel argued that the petitioner had filed the complaint before the police on 20th August and approached the court the next day without giving any time to the police to act. The court has now posted the matter for further hearing tomorrow upon allowing time to Ali's counsel to file a reply. In the next update, the Supreme Court today addressed the blockade on National Highway at Shambhu border. Justices Surekant, Dipankar Datta and Ujjal Bhuya heard State of Haryana's plea against Punjab and Haryana High Court's decision to unblock the Shambhu border between the states of Punjab and Haryana. You are aware that the border was closed in February this year due to farmers' protests raising demands such as a statutory guarantee for the minimum support price for crops. The bench today said that they will issue an order within a week to form a committee to negotiate with the protesting farmers. The court asked the states of Punjab and Haryana to submit within three days the proposed issues that the committee should focus on. The court also made it clear that the committee will have a broad mandate to address recurring law and order problems in a fair and just manner. Previously, both the states had submitted a list of names of persons who could be included in the panel proposed to be formed by the Supreme Court to hold negotiations with the protesters and the government. The bench has now asked the state to continue to persuade the farmers to remove tractors and trolleys and if need be, then the issues can be informally discussed with them. When Advocate General suggested that one more meeting be held before the next date of the hearing to crystallize the issues, the court conceded and said that in that case, the matter would be taken up on 2nd September. Lastly, it also granted liberty to the state of Punjab to suggest more names for composition of the committee within three days. 
And now an update on another disturbing incident of alleged sexual assault of two minor kindergarten girls in a school at Badlapur in Thane. A division bench of the Bombay High Court comprising Justices Revati Moite Dere and Prithvi Rajchavan today heard the Suomoto PIL regarding the case. Taking note of the victims' ages being four years and three years respectively, the bench expressed anguish over the fact that the incident of sexual assault took place within the school premises. It also expressed concern at the delay in lodging of FIR and pointed out several lapses in the preliminary investigation carried out by the Badlapur police saying that it did not play its role the way it ought to have. The judges noted that the police failed to record statements of the second victim and also of her family. It further noted that no action was taken against the school for failing to report the incident of sexual assault to the police despite the victims and their families complaining the same to the school authorities. Justice Chavan, referring to the public outrage against this incident said that it has become a common thing now unless there is a strong outburst the machinery does not work. The bench therefore said that something needs to be done with the police force itself and expressed that there must be some sensitization of the police department. The top court today refused to stay meeting of committee of creditors formed by resolution professional in relation to insolvency resolution of edtech firm Baiju's. For those of you who do not know, a committee of creditors is a group of people or organization that company owes money to. They help decide how to handle the company's debts during insolvency. Last week, the bench led by CJDY Chandrachud and comprising Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra had stayed the order of National Company Law Appellate Tribunal, which upheld the settlement between Baiju's and BCCI in relation to Baiju's 158 crore dues to the latter. The stay order was passed on an appeal filed by US-based lender Glass Trust Company LLC, which opposed the Baiju's BCCI settlement. This stay order led to the revival of the insolvency proceedings against Baiju's. Today, senior advocate Sham Devan, representing the appellant, that is Glass Trust Company, said that he required time to respond to the voluminous response filed by the respondents. Senior advocate Abhishek Manu Singhvi, appearing for Baiju's, then told the bench that the COC was hastily constituted yesterday evening at the instance of Glass Trust Company to render his case infructuous. Singhvi submitted that 98% of the COC are representatives of the Glass Trust Company. He stated that no prejudice would be caused if the COC meeting is deferred till Tuesday, that is the next date of hearing. S.G. Tushar Mehta for the BCCI backed Singhvi's request and said that an interim order was necessary to balance the equities. However, the CGI said that if the appeal is ultimately dismissed, then the COC decisions also will be invalidated. CJ Chandrachud said that the appeal will have to be heard on merits and posted the matter next Tuesday. The Supreme Court Bench of Justices M.M. Sondresh and Arvind Kumar today heard the bail plea of activist and Bhima Koregao case accused Jyoti Jagtap. She has challenged denial of regular bail by Bombay High Court. She has been lodged in jail since September 2020 for offences under the UAPA after being arrested in connection with the 2018 caste-based violence that broke out at Bhima Koregaon in Pune and for having alleged links with the proscribed far-left outfit Communist Party of India, Maoists. Senior Advocate Mihir Desai, appearing for Jagtap, submitted before the court that there were three main allegations against her. First, that she was one of the core organizers of the Elgar Parishad event. Second, that she participated in a skit which was provocative. And third, that as per a witness statement, she had participated in an arms training event in 2011. He further said that there were 285 witnesses and charges were yet to be framed. That she had been under custody for over four years while out of the 16 persons arrested in the same case, one had passed away and seven are out on bail. Interjecting this argument, Additional Solicitor General K.M. Natraj pointed out that the National Investigation Agency's appeal against the bail granted to co-accused in this case Mahesh Raut is pending before another bench of the court. The ASG stated that Raut, who was booked under the same FIR, was granted bail by the High Court, but that order was stayed. Hearing this, the bench 
thought it fit that both the matters be heard together. Therefore, it asked the registry to obtain orders for conjoint hearing of the two cases. In another update, the Delhi High Court has referred to arbitration the dispute between the former managing director of Bharat Pay, Ashneer Grover, and the fintech company concerning an employment agreement entered between them in August 2021. Justice C. Hari Shankar passed the order for appointment of a sole arbitrator to resolve the dispute. A plea was filed by Bharat Pay alleging that Grover disclosed confidential information of the fintech company on social media, thus violating the employment agreement. Bharat Pay issued a notice to Grover invoking arbitration under the 2021 employment agreement. The fintech company proposed to constitute the arbitral tribunal by jointly appointing the sole arbitrator together with Grover. As per the plea, Grover responded to the notice of arbitration through his counsel and did not object to constitution of an arbitral tribunal. However, he did not agree to appointment of the sole arbitrator proposed by Bharat Pay. Therefore, they approached the High Court seeking appointment of the sole arbitrator. You are aware that earlier this week, the Justice Hema Committee report on issues faced by women in the Malayalam film industry was released. The report revealed that women in the film industry face numerous issues including sexual demands, sexual harassment, abuse and assault in workplace. They also face problems of transportation and accommodation, lack basic facilities like toilets and changing rooms in film sets, leading to human rights violations. Additionally, this report highlighted the issues of lack of safety and security for women, gender discrimination, male domination, etc. Post this, a PIL was filed before the Kerala High Court seeking to initiate criminal proceedings against offenders who committed sexual crimes against women in the Malayalam film industry. The counsel for the petitioner submitted before the court that state has a responsibility to prosecute individuals who committed cognizable offences against women in the film industry based on the information disclosed in the report. The court noted that the issue is that parties want to maintain anonymity and that they are vulnerable section of women who do not wish to disclose about harassment in public. The court noted that this issue has to be addressed and actions need to be taken to protect these vulnerable women. It has directed the state government to make available the entire committee report including the redacted portions before the court in a sealed cover. The court also swore moto impleaded the Kerala State Women's Commission. Let me tell you, the matter was posted to 10th September for further hearing. Stay tuned. If you wish to know more details about the cases that I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.